In this Blender video, I'll be demonstrating how to make this animation. We'll be using a cloth simulation for the body and a particle system for the hair. I'll be using Blender version 2.79b. Let's start by creating a new project. So from the File menu select New and then click on Reload Startup File. To make it easier to see the scale and location of the objects that we'll be adding, switch from Perspective to Orthographic View by pressing 5 on the number pad. When we render the final animation, it will be in Perspective View. Now make sure that the cube is selected and then press X to delete. We're going to add a mesh plane, but first we'll center the 3D cursor in case it moved. So press Shift S and select Cursor to Center. Now press Shift A and select a mesh plane. Later on we're going to be adding a cloth modifier to this to make it bend like rubber. But in order for it to bend, we need to add more geometry to it. So press Tab for edit mode. Then make sure everything is selected and then click the subdivide button. Set the number of cuts to 5. The more cuts that are used, the more bendable it will become. But by limiting the number of cuts to 5, it will have enough stiffness to make it bend like rubber. Now we'll add a solidify modifier to give it some thickness. So press Tab to return to object mode. Then switch to the object modifiers panel and add a solidify modifier. Set the thickness to 0.1. Now let's smooth it out, so add a subdivision surface modifier. Set the view and render values to 2. Then click the Smooth button. Next we're going to set up the material for it, so switch to the Material panel. Then click the New button. Now come up here and change this from Blender Render to Cycles Render. Then click the Use Nodes button. Set the surface type to the Principled Shader. Set the base color to a hex value of E7 A100. Then set the roughness value to 0.3 to prevent the surface from being too glossy. Next we're going to add a couple of eyes to it. So press Tab for edit mode. Then center the 3D cursor in case it moved by pressing Shift S and select Cursor to Center. Then press Shift A and add a UV sphere. We're going to use the top circular portion of the sphere for the pupil of the eye, so rotate it by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Then rotate it again by pressing R, then Z, then 45, then Enter. Now scale it down in size by pressing S, then 0.2, then Enter. Then move it up slightly by pressing G, then Z, then 0.02, then Enter. Now we'll make a separation between the eyeball and socket. So select the center vertex. Then hold down the control key and press the plus key on the number pad five times. If you don't have a number pad, then from the select menu select more less than more. If you're using this menu, then you'll need to do this five times. Now we're going to shrink this selection to represent the eyeball. So from the Extrude menu, select Region, Vertex, Normals. Then type minus 0.02, then press Enter. Next we'll change this selection to a white color. So switch to Material View so that we can see the colors. Then click this plus button to add a new material slot. Then click the New button. Change the surface type to the Principled Shader. We'll keep all of these default values. Now click the Assign button so that this material will be applied to the selection. Next we'll change the pupil to a black color. So select the center vertex. Then hold down the control key and press the plus key on the number pad twice. Now click this plus button to add a new material slot. Then click the New button. Change the surface type to the principled shader. Then set the base color to black. Now click the Assign button so that this material will be applied to the selection. I'm going to switch back to Solid View now so that it will be easier to see what is and is not selected. Next we need to select the whole eyeball and socket so that we can move it into position. Since part of the eye is already selected, 
press Ctrl L, which will select all of the linked vertices. Then press 7 on the number pad for top view. We're going to move the eye until this corner vertex is at the center of this edge. So press G to move and drag it into position. Now we're going to duplicate this and move it so that this corner vertex is at the center of this edge. So press Shift D to duplicate and drag it into position. When we add a cloth modifier to this, it will become bendable, but there are certain parts of it that should not bend. So we're going to select the vertices that we do not want to bend, add them to a vertex group, and then specify that vertex group in the cloth simulator to prevent them from bending. So we'll start by selecting the vertices where we do not want bending to occur. So that we can select vertices on the top and bottom at the same time, I'm going to switch to wireframe view. Then I'll press A to deselect all. Now we're going to select the vertices between the top left corner and the bottom right corner. So press C for circle select. You should see a white selection circle that you can resize with your scroll wheel. Set it to a small size. Then hold down the left mouse button and drag the circle over the vertices that you want to select. Then release the left mouse button. And you'll notice that we're still in circle select mode even though we release the left mouse button. Now resize the selection circle until it's a little larger than one of the eyes. Then select this vertex, both eyes, and then this vertex. Now press the Enter key to end circle select. These selected vertices are the vertices that we do not want to bend. So now we'll add them to a vertex group. So switch to the Object Data panel. Then click the plus button in the Vertex Groups section. Then click the Assign button to assign the selected vertices to the group. I'm also going to rename this group Stiff. Now we'll set up the Cloth Simulator, so press Tab for Object Mode. I'm also going to switch back to Solid View. Next, switch to the Physics panel. You may need to resize the panel on the right to bring the Physics button into view. Now click the Cloth button. Then add a check mark next to Pinning so that we can specify a vertex group. Then click in the entry box and select the vertex group that we set up. Now the vertices specified in the vertex group will be stiff. Next, switch to the Object Modifiers panel. Currently, the cloth modifier that we just added is at the bottom of the modifier stack. So click this up triangle to move it up a level. Then click it one more time to move it to the top. This will allow the cloth modifier to be applied before the solidify and subdivision surface modifiers. Now if I click the play button, you can see how it bends. Next, let's set up the animation keyframes. The animation is going to be 168 frames long, so set the end frame value to 168. Now press N to open the Properties panel. We're going to enter the location and rotation values here. At the start of the animation, the object will be raised and rotated by 90 degrees. So set the frame number to 1. Then change the Z-axis location value to 1 and the Z-axis rotation value to minus 90. The other value should be 0. To add a keyframe, Move the cursor into the 3D view window and press the I key. Then select Location, Rotation. The location and rotation background color will turn to yellow, indicating that a keyframe has been added for these values. Next, set the frame number to 15. Then change the Z-axis location and rotation values to 0. Now all six values should be 0. To set a keyframe, press I and select Location, Rotation. Now set the frame number to 50. The location and rotation will not change between frames 15 and 50, so set a keyframe here by pressing I and select Location, Rotation. Now set the frame number to 60. At this frame, the object will be rotated by 90 degrees. So set the Z-axis rotation value to 90. 
Then press I and select Location, Rotation. Next, set the frame number to 80. The location and rotation will not change between frames 60 and 80, so press I and select Location, Rotation. Now set the frame number to 90. At this frame, the object will rotate back to 0 degrees, so set the Z-axis rotation value to 0. Then press I and select Location, Rotation. Next, set the frame number to 120. The location and rotation will not change between frames 90 and 120, so press I and select Location, Rotation. Now set the frame number to 160. The object is going to fly away between frames 120 and 160, so set the Y-axis location value to minus 4.5, the z-axis location value to 2, the x-axis rotation value to minus 10, the y-axis rotation value to minus 25, and the z-axis rotation value to minus 90. Then press I and select Location, Rotation. We don't need the Properties panel any longer, so I'll press N to close it. I'm going to press Play so that we can see what this looks like. When I do this, watch the corners of the object when it rotates. A nice thing about the cloth simulator is that it simulates centrifugal force. So when the object rotates, the corners will rise. This is a good time to save what I have so far. I'm going to name it Floppy. Dot blend. Next we're going to set up the hair and we're going to use a particle system for this. So switch to the particles panel and then click the new button. Set the type to hair. Then set the number to 10,000 and the hair length to 1. Now add a check mark next to Use Modifier Stack so that it will use the modifiers that we added previously. Right now, the hairs are emitted from the whole object, including the eyes. So we're going to restrict the areas where the hair can be emitted by using a vertex group. So press Tab for Edit Mode. Then press 7 on the number pad for Top View. Then press A to deselect all. Now press C for Circle Select. Then select these vertices. When you're done, press the Enter key to end Circle Select. I don't know what the reason is, but if you select the vertices on the outer edge, then unwanted hairs will be generated at the origin of the 3D view. Here's an animation that I did where the outside vertices were selected. You can see the unwanted hairs here. That's the reason that I didn't use any of the outside vertices. Our next step is to add these vertices to a vertex group. So switch to the Object Data panel. Then click the plus button in the Vertex Group section. Then click the Assign button to assign the selected vertices to the group. I'm also going to rename this group Hair. Now press Tab to switch back to Object Mode. Next, switch to the Particles panel. Then open the Vertex Groups section. Then click in the Length entry box and select the Vertex group that we just set up named Hair. Now the hairs are only emitted in the areas that we specified in the Vertex group. Now we'll set the color of the hair. In the Render section, this is where you select the material that will be used for the hair. So let's add a new material and then select it here. To do that, switch to the Material panel. Then click this plus button to add a new material slot. Then click the new button and for the surface type select the principled shader. Now set the color to a hex value of E7BD5C. Then set the roughness value to 1 so that the hair will not be glossy. I'm going to rename this material hair. Now switch back to the Particles panel. 
Then click here and set this to the material that we just set up named hair. There's a couple more changes to make in the particles panel. Up near the top, add a check mark next to advanced, which will give us some more options. Then click the random button. I think this makes the distribution of the hairs look better. Now add a check mark next to hair dynamics, which will make the hairs move more naturally. Now I'll press the play button so that we can see what this looks like. I'm going to speed up the video for this part because it plays too slow in real time. Next we'll set up the camera view. So press 0 on the number pad for camera view. This is the view looking through the camera. I'll zoom in a little. Now I'm going to lock the camera to the view. To do that, press N to open the properties panel and put a check mark next to lock camera to view. Then press N again to close the properties panel. Now I can zoom, pan, and rotate while looking through the camera. Next I'm going to set the frame number somewhere between frame 15 and 50 because that's the position that I want it to be in when I set up the camera view. Now I'll set up the view that I'd like to use. Next we'll set up the lighting, so press 7 on the number pad for top view. Then select the lamp, press G to move, and drag it until it's 6 grid divisions below the center and 4 grid divisions to the right. Then press 1 on the number pad for front view. Then drag the lamp until it's 5 grid divisions above the center. Now switch to the object data panel. Make sure that the point lamp is selected and set the size to 3. Then click the Use Nodes button and set the strength to 5000. Now let's see what this looks like in rendered view. So I'll press 0 on the number pad to switch to camera view and then I'll switch to rendered view. Next we're going to set the background color to black. So switch to the world panel. Then set the color to black. I'll switch back to solid view now. Now let's set things up for the final render. So switch to the render panel. Then open the sampling section. This is where you can set the number of render samples. The larger this value is, the better the final animation will look, but the longer it will take to render. I'm going to set it to 150. Sometimes you can get unwanted bright speckles in the rendered image. These are sometimes referred to as fireflies. To help prevent this, I'm going to set the clamp indirect value to 2. Now come up to the output section. This is where you set the directory where your animation will be saved. Click on this button and navigate to the directory that you want to use. Then click this button to create a subdirectory. I'm going to name it Render. Now select the new directory and click Accept. Next, click here to set the file format. If you select an image format, then each frame will be rendered as an individual image. If you select a movie format, then the animation will be rendered as a single movie file. I'm going to select the PNG format, which will render each frame as an individual image. Now we're ready to render the animation, but I'm going to save the project first. It's a good idea to save the project before rendering in case something goes wrong during the rendering process. To render the animation, go to the Render menu and select Render Animation. If you want to stop the rendering process before it's done, you can press the Escape key or you can click the X next to the Render Progress bar. Now I'll pause the video until it's done. The animation is done rendering now. It took my computer about an hour and 15 minutes to render the animation. This is the final frame that was rendered. If you want to return to the previous view, you can click this button and select 3D View. To view the animation, go to the Render menu and click on Play Rendered Animation. The animation will play through to the end and then start back at the beginning again. If you would like to convert your animation into a single movie file, then you can watch my video on rendering a Blender animation. You can find a link to it in the video description. In that video, I also explain why it can be a good idea to render your animation as individual images. Well that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.